is a psychologist, Dr. Irene of Fordile, on Tuesday advised youths to embrace dialogue as a way of resolving their grievances and frustrations rather than take to violence or suicide. Fordile, who works with the Anambra State Polytechnic, in an interview identified suicide as a major cause of premature deaths among youths in the society. She added that research by the Association of Psychiatrics of Nigeria and the Suicide Research and Prevention Initiative indicated that about one-fifth suicide cases occur among youths aged between 13 and 19 years. Also, the findings stated that about 63.5% of youths aged 20 to 39 years were having thoughts of suicide, out of which 28.2% of them were students. According to her, this calls for worry, especially for a country like Nigeria that has a relatively youthful population. Suicide in Nigeria has taken on a worrying dimension in recent times as stories of people killing themselves have become rampant in media. According to the 2016 Global Health Observatory Data Repository by the World Health Organization, WHO, there is an estimated 9.5 suicides per 100,000 Nigerians. To stir up an advocacy on the prevalence of suicide in Nigeria and the need for urgent action, Plus TV Africa correspondent Mary Chinda visited the University of Nigeria in Suka to unravel the story of a 21-year-old first-class undergraduate at the school who died by suicide. 800,000 persons die by suicide every year. Now that's according to statistics from the World Health Organization. More statistics reveal that every 40 seconds, at least one person is likely to die by suicide. Suicide is the second leading cause of death among 15 to 29 year olds globally. When Nigerians cross over to the new year in 2019, it was all prayers to God and excitement. Little did the nation anticipate the reign of multiple suicides that would soon ravage it. January 2nd, 2019 was greeted with the first case of suicide. DJ XG, the popular Lagos DJ, who took his own life allegedly over marital troubles just a few hours after posting a sad suicide note on his Instagram account. Then to Ms. Hikmat Badamosi, a 100 level student of the University of Port Harcourt. And that statistics continued to swell with a first class student of yet another Nigerian university the 21-year-old Akachi Chukwemeka, who took his own life after dropping a suicide note on his Facebook page. This suicide takes me all the way to the University of Nigeria and Suka, where his friends and classmates speak about his last moments. Akashi was dealing with depression long before he came out as an atheist. So if anything, it, it, the depression had left a footprint. And like I said earlier, you can find it reflected in his writing, which is what a lot of people should do. Akachi's life is kind of complicated, sort of, because I've always known him right from year one as this type of person who is reticent. It's kind of a lonely being, let me put it that way. He usually like being on his own, kind of. So most times, even earlier that day we met, I noticed his mood, kind of. I even asked him basically, Akachi, what's your, what's your problem? I've asked him several times, what's your problem? He always tell me, Chris, you won't understand. I meet Victor, Akachi's closest friend and course mate. He is very emotional as he speaks with me. He deeply regrets his friend's decision to commit suicide. I never expected something like this to happen. Just, it was, it was a shock. It's so sad that he had to end his life at the ending while we were just about graduating, but I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't still understand it. And concerning the circumstances of his suicide, 
I personally know the, tr the struggles he went through. From my findings, the pain of suicide is only passed on to the family and loved ones of the suicide victim. The full report is up on our website and on our YouTube page at Plus TV Africa. You could go watch the full report there after this conversation. With me in the studio to talk about this is uh, the reporter that did the story itself, uh, Plus TV Africa's Mary Chinda. Thank you very much for coming um, to the news. Good morning. And of course, we have behavioral change expert, Dr. Deji Osasuna. Pleasure to have you as well. Thank you very much for having me. All right, let's start with you, Mary. What drew you to this story and of what significance is it? Well, I, I think first the, the, the fact that depression is not something that is talked about um, as often as, as we get to experience it. I said last year when, when I did this story, I, did, I realized that personally I had even been gone through depression sometime in 2018 and the awareness that what I was going through was depression was very low even though I was a journalist and I had information you know and then people go through these things your brother your father your mom your friend your boyfriend husband they go through this thing so it takes a lot of awareness to understand that the phase that this person is going through is depression and, and a lot of times in the course of this work i got to realize that sadness is different from depression you may suffer a loss and you're sad but like like the the, the, the doctor told me the doctor says in the course of this work when sadness or low mood you know dovetails to two weeks then you're you're hitting a depression or you're already depressed. So the significance of this work is to bring to light the reality that, look, we're having suicide cases, especially in 2019. It was a lot. We had over 20 suicide cases. This case of this 21-year-old was very sad because it was in his last semester. He was graduating with a first class. You know, and then he decided to take his own life, of course, due to societal pressure, due to self-pressure. He was successful academically, but there were a lot of things, emotional um, intelligence, a lot of things that he didn't have. And universities don't get to prepare us for these realities of life. Let's bring Dr. Sass in. Uh, she um, highlighted uh, some of the things that you've said to her and the case that in 2019 we had an increased number of suicide. Where are we currently in creating awareness and addressing this menace? All right, thank you for the question. Uh, the reality is that uh, there's different organizations, different bodies doing their best. Uh, the government is also doing its own. However, it's obviously not good enough. Uh, so I'm aware there are a lot of initiatives and there are a lot of uh, non-government organizations and even corporate organizations that are sponsoring social enterprise related to mental health awareness, especially on suicide and depression. And government has initiatives also. And I'm aware of some initiatives from government that serves as a rescue line for uh, people battling suicidal ideations like uh, uh, suicide research and preventive prevention initiative something with various lines that are available to be called at any point in time. But I believe uh, the focus should be more on preventive awareness. Uh, what, what do I mean by preventive awareness? So the reality of our society today is this. By the way, depression is the leading cause of suicide. Uh, that does not rule out the fact that uh, some suicide happen not because of mental health issue. It said that about 90% of suicide is traceable to mental health issues. And leading among the mental health issues, depression. But there are some that are impulsive as a result of a particular incident or traumatic case that happened. It could be shame, embarrassment, disappointment, delays, denials, rejections, failure, and the likes. However, the truth is this we have a society booming with youths that have low mental resilience. Is there a stigma? Because the, <coughs> she mentioned depression. Uh, mm. She also had the situation at some point. Most of us have gone mm. through it at one point or the other. Mm -hmm. Is there a stigma attached to it that is making people hesitant to come out and speak? Yeah, so power of saying and how resilience comes in, definitely there is a stigma. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the social stigma or the societal stigma is very huge. Uh, I mean, you have just ordinary eating disorder. Let me use the word eating disorder. 
and you're going to see a psychologist. As long as you're going to a psychiatric hospital or a psychiatric center, or you just even mention to a family member and seeing a psychologist, guess what an average Nigerian thinks? Are you going? That's what they will say. And these are the societal stigma. Then another dimension to the stigma is the religious angle. Uh, thank God for some religious leaders that are shifting their paradigm. But an average religious leader still strongly believes that uh, uh, suicide or suicidal ideation or depression or even mental health issues are demonic. Meanwhile, majority of them, I dare say, have nothing to do with spiritual connotation or demonic infestation. Essentially, it's just structural and biochemical imbalances in the brain, which could be have been precipitated by an external factor or could be genetically. Because there's some argument. Yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to come to with you yeah. on that because in the course of this report, if you look at the full documentary, mm. I had to interview um, a, a bishop and I had to interview an mm. imam. And the reality is, as much as some of these things, 90% of it, as you say, mm. are psychological, we also have a spiritual connotation from, yeah, my, from my finding. You know, both, both um, um, Islam and Christianity condemn suicide, and every, uh, both religions think that it's actually demonic. You know, so as much as you're getting meant, as much as you're getting um, help from a psychologist, you also will not rule out the God factor in this. And I also want to note something, um, 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 Felicity, the fact that in Nigeria, sir, yeah. um, the laws that we have says that it is wrong for you to attempt to take your own life. In other words, if you're caught attempting mm. to take your own life, it is criminal. So now, is, now, that, is now, that what we should be, is that the kind of conversation we should be pushing? Because this is a sensitive situation that has to do with mental health, right? Mm. Should we be pushing the, what the law says as it's a crime to commit <laughs> suicide? Or we should expand, hold on Mary, we should extend more energy towards creating more awareness and preventing people from thinking um, of um, uh, taking their life as a solution to their problems. All right, so the, the truth is this. The Mental Health Act we have presently is the Lunacy Act of 1958, which uh, had the influence of the British government, our colonial masters. And by the way, they have even repealed theirs. They've changed their constitution in 1961. I'm aware that uh, twice, in 2003 and 2013, a bill was sponsored, and but it gets eventually enacted into law because of certain factors. So definitely we have an issue with the legalization of certain Mental Health Promotion Act. And awareness. However, uh, I think uh, while the bodies are responsible for that, are promoting that, I think uh, awareness should be more at the grassroots level. Uh, and it should cut across because collaboration is the new way forward. What are the signs to look out for and what are the actions you should take when you see someone with those signs quickly? Okay, so there is a model globally accepted that was developed by a World Health Organization. It's called the AGE model, uh, which we call the mental health force aid. So whether you're a parent, you're a guardian, you're a, a protector, you're a teacher, you're a an employer or a human resource professional or anybody, your friend, a spouse, uh, working with these five uh, uh, steps will easily help. And you can just represent those five steps with your five fingers, uh, the A-L-G-E-E, -E. A meaning awareness of the common signs and symptoms of depression and suicide. Uh, time will not permit me to quickly yes, go through that. Yeah, just, then just highlight them. L is listening non-judgmentally, uh, which is very key. You can't afford to be judging or describing this as being weak spiritual. Could, could you just whatever. go through the steps because we're out of time, the sir? third one is giving social support, get involved socially in the person's life if you're close to the person. The fourth one is encourage the person to seek professional help. Encourage, yes, prayer is good, Prayer is good, but most cases are mental health issues. Encourage the person to seek professional help. And the last one is essentially what we call educating. Seek education in terms of building mental resilience for the person or even around the medications the person is taking. I think that's where we have to stop. Thank you very much, thank Doctor, you. for coming on the program. And of course, thank you very much, Mary, for that very thank wonderful you so report. Much, thank, thank you. So much.